Are you getting the most out of your sun or system? Let's find out. Hi guys, it's Emily from Smart Home Sounds, a home audiovisual company and leading Sonos retailer here in the UK. If you're watching this video, chances are you've probably got at least one Sonos speaker, but have you ever wondered if you're getting the best sound quality out of those speakers? Well, I've got five top tips for you today to make sure you're maximizing audio quality on your Sonos speakers and getting the most out of your system. I'll just highlight that some of these tips might not be brand new information for all of you, but should be a great place to start if you're new to Sonos, and there might even be a few nuggets in there that you didn't know, even if you've had Sonos for years, so do look out for those. Before I get into it, there's lots of other Sonos content on our channel, including reviews, top tips, comparisons, etc. So make sure you check all of that out if you're interested in more, and subscribe if you want to see more from us. Comment below which tips you found useful and any additional tips to help the community out. Right, let's get into it. In this video, I'm gonna be covering true play tuning, adjusting EQ settings, streaming high res CD quality and Dolby Atmos audio, stereo pairing, and finally adjusting line in settings. I'll make sure I chapter this video for you guys so you can just jump to sections you're interested in if you don't fancy watching everything. So tip number one is true play tuning. TruePlay is a Sonos technology which optimizes your speakers for the space they're in to offer the best possible sound performance in that area. Many factors can influence the performance of your Sonos speakers, including the size of your room, any soft or hard furnishings, and lots of things like that. So you wanna make sure you're giving your speakers the best chance possible in the space that you've put them in. Traditionally, TruePlay works using microphones in an iOS device. Unfortunately, it is iOS only. There's no luck for Android users yet on this, but you can just borrow someone else's iOS device um, as it only needs to be done once. Right, so you just need to open up your Sonos app on your iOS device and select System, choose a speaker that you want to TruePlay, press TruePlay and then TruePlay Tuning, and then you just need to follow the instructions and they'll guide you through the process. You will hear test tones being emitted, which help to analyse your surroundings, and you'll also have to walk around the room waving your arm around, which does feel a little bit stupid, but trust me, it is worth it. Now, this is the process that you're going to be using for the majority of Sonos speakers, and I'll pop all those up on the screen now for you. I do have a few extra top tips for TruePlay. Um, so firstly, make sure you walk around the whole listening space for more accurate results, or you can actually focus on your preferred listening spot in the room if that's going to suit your listening needs better. Secondly, make sure that all other noise in the room is kept to a minimum whilst you're carrying out the process as that will give you the most accurate results. And finally, make sure you do resist turning the volume down even though the test tones are pretty loud as it's gonna impact the results if you do that. If you're not happy with your results, you can always repeat the process and don't forget you can toggle TruePlay on and off in the app so you can check out what the difference was. Now there are currently two speakers which don't follow the same process and that is the Sonos Move and the Sonos Roam which is Sonos' two portable speakers. These actually carry out automatic TruePlay for you, whether you're on Wi-Fi or on Bluetooth. So what this means is that these speakers will detect when they've been placed somewhere new, and the built-in microphones within the speaker will then ensure that it's optimised for the new space you've put it in, which is pretty handy. Two other anomalies are the Sonos Port and the Sonos Amp. Now the port unfortunately can't allow for TruePlay as the sound output is directed into an external amp. So an extra tip here would be to add an external DAC to the port which will extract more information from your digital audio formats and sources, offering a greater detail and more rhythmic timing during playback. The Sonos Amp is similar um, to the port whereby it can't be true played if you're using non-Sonos wired speakers. If, however, you choose to use Sonos' own ceiling or in-wall speakers, then TruePlay will pop up in the app for you to do. Okay, moving on to tip number two then, which is adjusting the EQ and loudness. Now, one of the great things about the Sonos app is the level of control that you have over your speakers, specifically manually adjusting the EQ settings. Now, you might find you like the sound of the speakers as they are at the box, which is pretty common with Sonos speakers. However, you do have the option to tweak the bass and treble of your speakers, which can be suited more to your own personal taste. As you can see here, there's also a toggle for loudness, um, and this actually boosts certain frequencies, including the bass, when you're listening at lower volumes. Now, it's designed to compensate for normal changes in your ear sensitivity when you're listening at those lower volumes, so we personally would recommend keeping this on if you do listen to majority of your music at slightly lower volumes. Now, if you're one of the lucky ones who doesn't have an iOS device, it's quite handy um, to adjust the EQ and the loudness settings um, as you can't do true play. So it is a nice little workaround for you. So to adjust the EQ settings, you just need to open up the Sonos app and then select settings, tap system and then find the Sonos speaker. From there, you just need to select EQ and you can then play around and adjust the sound to suit your preferences. Tip 
Tip number three is to try streaming in CD quality or high res. So most streaming services offer compressed versions of your favorite songs where the original file size is of the track is shrunken down to half of its size or less in some cases. Now this compression can make it harder to hear the more intricate details in your favorite tracks. It can make stereo separation less noticeable and you can sometimes lose certain elements of the track altogether. So a great way to get more out of your Sonos system is to make the most out of their advanced audio processors with premium services such as Deezer Hi-Fi, Sonos Radio HD and Amazon Music HD and they all offer high res music streaming in CD quality. Now you can take things one step further with Kobas uh, which offers CD lossless and high res with their 24 bit uh, 48 kilohertz music streaming service and that is fully compatible with Sonos. Now the best thing with all of these services is just to give them a try. Most of them offer a free trial before you have to commit to a monthly subscription and you can see then whether you like it or not. If you're a regular viewer of our channel you might have seen our recent video on Apple Music lossless streaming and spatial audio with Dolby Atmos. Now this is a really exciting topic which I'm not going to delve too much into in this video so I'd highly recommend giving that a watch if you're interested. Um, but essentially Apple Music have added thousands of tracks in lossless audio with some offering high res lossless up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz to really get the most out of your music. Now at the same time they also release spatial audio with Dolby Atmos which if you've not given it a go yet we would highly recommend doing so. We see this as the future of audio and it's great to have a listen to the huge catalogue of music in different genres, by different artists, and then notice the difference between um, spatial audio and mono or stereo. There are, however, a lot of hoops you do have to jump through um, to access this music, so in our video we do show you a few cheats to Sonos users. Just to quickly sum it up, the best solution currently is if you've got a Sonos Arc with an Apple TV, and with an Apple Music subscription you can then enjoy lossless spatial audio music on the Arc, which we think sounds really good. Now we are hoping there will be some more updates coming soon which will make it easier to access all of these new features and Sonos speakers, but for now this cheat is a really good workaround. Okay, on to tip number four then, which is stereo pairing your Sonos speakers. So we think single Sonos speakers sound great on their own, but a stereo pair really takes it up another level. As long as you've got a pair of matching Sonos products, you can enjoy authentic stereo sound where one speaker will be dedicated to the left channel and the other to the right. Now this is going to offer you um, a stereo image which is more immersive and more engaging and you will be able to hear more details from each of the channels. Now I'll pop up a list for you which shows which speakers can be paired with each other, so feel free to pause now and have a little look at that. So as you can see, the portable speakers, the Move and the Roam, can be paired in Wi-Fi mode only, which is a little bit disappointing, um, so we're hoping this is going to become available over Bluetooth sometime in a future update. So to set up a stereo pair, you just need to go into Settings, System, find the speaker that you want to stereo pair, and then follow the on-screen instructions, and then you can just confirm your speaker choice and then follow the steps. Everything's in the app, it's really straightforward to do. Our final tip, tip number five, is adjusting the line in audio settings. Now this tip is perfect for those connecting a CD player or turntable or something like that to a Sonos device with a line in connection. Now this is going to act as a gateway which will enable you to enjoy the best of both worlds with traditional formats and modern streaming. So our tip here is to make sure you've adjusted the input source level. So physical audio formats tend to play back at varying volume levels, which means that they can sound quieter than streaming services. Now this is especially notable for vinyl records, uh, mainly as they have much lower volume outputs compared with digital sources, even with a phono preamp in place. So to maximize the output, you can adjust the line in levels. So to do this, you just need to select settings, find your Sonos device with its line in connection, scroll to find line in settings, and then adjust the source level to suit. Now we tend to recommend a line-in level of 8 if you've got a turntable connected to a Sonos line-in product. Now a little top tip here is to make sure you've turned off line-in compression. So as I mentioned, compression scales down the audio quality of your music and reduces the level of detail. So Sonos devices which have line-in connections such as the 5, the ports and the amp enable you to use compression for easier transmission throughout your system. However, we would advise turning this off for higher playback quality from your external audio sources. Now to do this, you need to select Settings, System, press Audio Compression, and then select Uncompressed. So that just about wraps up our top five tips for maximizing audio quality on your Sonos system. Sonos speakers are great out of the box, but hopefully these tips will help you push them one step further and access their full potential. If you found this video helpful, it'd be great if you could give this a like and consider subscribing. And don't forget to comment below any tips you hadn't heard of, or as I said at the start, comment any extra tips that you think will help other people out. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.